office is closed for business. Thank you. Uh, I like what you've done with the place by this. We did not get onto the agenda. Okay. 
All I'm going to say is it's going to be fun. Our friends and Alex are getting the governor and the red states together to do a constitutional convention, and they're going to do it to balance the budget. And in the meantime, while they're doing it, they're going to sneak in all that other crap, which means while, while us Absolutely. and our Democratic high-minded friends are sitting here twiddling their thumbs going, oh, we don't want to open up Pandora's box. No, we have to open Pandora's box, box then, even though they want to. I've gone back and forth on this over the last year, but I am of the opinion if we don't strike, they will. Yep. And it has yep. to happen. And, you know, it ain't going to happen our way. We're raising awareness the way that we're doing it, but it ain't going to get it done in the end. Anyway, the thing that, just to close on the Constitutional Convention thing, and I want to make you aware, what has no, happened... Your piece and you're lost. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> what has happened is, when a state has a resolution that they pass, like the one we're trying to get through, it goes into, read into the record of the Congressional record, and the federal register. And it signs it. Yep. And what this guy had to do to find out that that many states had done it. He had to read. He had actually register. had to read the register. It's not recorded anywhere else. And so what what the, the, what the majority leader and the, and the, uh, and the president of the, and the Senate majority leader do is they just write it in there when they're notified of a state. And that's where it ends. And nobody knows. Nobody sees it. So nobody can do the tally. Can we send it? And so we did it now. Should we as a resolution committee send a note to Mississippi thanking them for finally ratifying <laughs> the 13th Amendment banning slavery? You know, that's a great idea. <laughs> that was the most insane piece of news. I thought the Pope last <laughs> resigning was bad. The 13th Amendment? So. So, what could happen? Let's say that our vote came in from Padres, and what we have to watch for, even when we get 34 states passing this thing, and it's going around, is that it gets buried in the Congressional Register so that you can't, nobody can say, hey, show me where that many states have done it. I haven't seen it. Hey, this is one of the reasons why I want to get Puerto Rico as a state. They'll be Democratic. So, the issue I wanted to get to. Sorry. I want the state of Oregon to require its congressional legislators to have to sit out and work for them. question. I think, I don't know, we should allow 20 people to get on there and try to stop it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Not a TV show. Because there ain't 20 people that have signed up on anything that's new to SoCal. Yeah. If somebody will drive me down there, I would be glad to testify. But I don't. We got to get people ready for that. Yep. Well, well, you would say having a large number of people to testify and to show uh, in a manner that was skillful and effective and dignified and, and not chaotic to the committee. Yes. Not the kind of thing where they're going to affect a lot of people. Any not yet. No. What kind of dress should I wear? <laughs> not yet, but I think no, what I'm looking yet. for is an unusual show of support for something in a committee because that is not something that I think they'd be that great on an issue like that. That's a way to make news. Yes. And without making it up. And to yeah. get your attention. And uh, what Becky Rackham did was she allowed some people to come down and hear you. Because um, any opposition is a huge head of thought. I just I think it's very important that we get past the usual going on about the committee. And it would be also it. awesome is if we could get one of our legislators to testify, not one that's on the rules committee, but just another legislator. I'm presuming that we're going to get um, I'm presuming we're gonna have Clem one would speak hope. about his own bill. One would hope. Yeah. But Shane Geyer now is in support. Really? We should be talking to her saying, hey, oh, yeah. when the time comes, will you go to committee and testify for us? And Gembro, same thing. Those are my ideas when, when, I, I, heard, when I heard last night. Make, you know, having three really, or two really perfect presentations of the full story quite concisely yeah. presented is okay. And then bring the live stream crew down there and let's get it on live, all their testimony. You know, put it on um, We're going to have to be revolution. very careful with live stream because they'll be real touchy about it. Too bad. You know what? I understand that, but, you know, the Capitol Police We're citizen that. journalists. I Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I saw it last year. Yeah. <laughs> Remember one of those bills would make us all felons. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, some state legislature in some other state, which I wish would leave the union, <laughs> seriously, has suggested to make it illegal to talk in the legislature about a bill that would reduce gun rights. Oh. Oh, yeah, it, that's right. I heard yeah. that. Yeah. I heard that. So it's like, uh, excuse me, um, how about the principle of you cannot make laws that control what the legislature talks about? I can restrict my First Amendment rights while I'm trying to talk about the Second Amendment rights. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, God, that will all kinds of. <laughs> yeah, the federal First Amendment rights, because good luck in federal court with that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. So, um, so those were those were some of the things I was thinking of. I think there's some other things that could be, but I think you got it right. It's kind of like I've heard you say two. Not make a racket, but make a point. And you make, make it hard to say no. Make it hard to say no, and make make them wonder what the cost would be if they do say no. Not state, but we would run a a candidate against them. What makes them think about how uncomfortable they would be talking to the folks down there? Exactly. And this would be people from, this would have to be our state coalition. This would have to be people from all over the state testifying. Not people from Portland. Right, right. right. we got to have people from every major region. <laughs> so that it has the effect of, geez, I don't know how much this right, right. has got. You know, know Rogue Valley, they're Manila, organized, uh, and I don't know how many Malheur County, yeah. Enterprise. Yeah. Hamilton, Ben. And Lee's got to be up on that, too. Yeah. Lee Murphy's got to be a part of that testimony. Now, why don't we get into a situation where other folks are getting in an car accident or something serious. I would advise you to keep your distance from the other people. I think it's very telling that the first lady of this state, the black lady, did not have to go to the police office. Mm -hmm. I think of that How many people are on? Democrat and Republican. I think it's one more Democrat than Republican. And it only takes a simple majority to move it out of committee? Yeah. That means we need every single Democrat. It means chairman is Democrat. We need every single Democrat. Well, one thing to get a 
unless you've got a Republican in your back pocket, the only way to get it out of the committee is every single Democrat has to vote for it. What do you mean? Get it. If only one more Democrat is on a campaign. Yeah, there's two questions.
kind of going to be just this. Mm. Yeah. yeah, some of the things that you normally think of as lobbying activities are not listed. Right. Some things that most people would not think as lobbying activities are listed, and I really want to know what's going on there. And so I wanted to capture this sort of the way that we could maybe help set them up on a little tip. I would be happy with any time a lobbyist contacts a staffer or a legislator personally. Yep. I would be very happy with that. Now, I think what was aimed at in particular is, is if you're a lobbyist and you're putting someone up in a hotel, flying them to a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recruiting them while you give them right, legislation, right, right. you got to report that. Where right. you don't have to, but you can still help. Yep. So that's why I said I, that's why I put Alex in there. It looks like there's an attempt to to word it in a way to capture some of this Alex stuff. Because it's interesting. So I've been talking to her about Alex, but um, she never got any indication that she cared at all about doing something about lobbying. It was so last time I called you saying you were running something for congressional table. Really. exercise of last year of studying the Alec legislation and comparing legislation in the Oregon legislative session to those model bills was just that. Was like, gee, you know, not every Alec bill is a bad one. There's a lot of bad ones. But every but not every one's a bad one, but every Alec bill was drafted to enrich a, a corporate interest or special interest. And yes. you could just bank on it. And I was thinking, you know, there isn't anything like that on the other side. And as much as both of us on the progressive side kind of bitch about it, we don't have a counter for it. And we've got these legislators that either are too dumb to do their job or too busy or whatever. If somebody hands them a bill and they're already inclined that way anyway, you know, why aren't we doing the dumb darn thing? Is that the way to get into Somebody hands them a bill yeah. and tell them to go get an haircut. Um, is that pretty much how they are? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I helped Rich Harris there run against Terry Strain, and he was an Alec member. I, right. I sent him all this stuff, and I, I talked to him on the phone a few times. <coughs> and, you know, in the summertime, I was going, you know, yeah, they're not, I said, you really should just make her about the fact that she's not her own woman. And, Somebody's handing her these bills, and she's just sort of the errand, the errand girl for them. Yeah, she's just the errand girl for them. She's she's just the conduit who gets them to the law. And and you know he's like, yeah, I, I'm going to try to make some hay out of that. And then I kind of thought over time, you know, gee, this just doesn't seem to be the way. And then I kind of realized, well, the reason for that is it's that way for them. That's the way they want to be. Hey. Call me back, yeah, okay? Because I can make it on, on my way later yeah. to the uh, thing anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But I am, I'm, I'm assisting 
I forgot about that until now. I'm going, oh, you really got some connections down there, Marion County. Here, how? That name doesn't ring a bell. It's um, the legislature. Uh, or they Carrie or uh, collaboration. Uh, yeah, email uh, somewhere every once in a while. Not that one. Right? No. Not that I know of. There will actually be some more more and more input. Uh, as we get some more information from the council, we can make it into a proper document. Uh, certain topics that they might be interested in. Wolf are connected, yeah, so he can get the army of researchers looking at real legislation. Basically, for classes 1970. 